Um, yeah, because of the meeting, I a separate meeting I had yesterday with DMNS people that um, Colleen um, set up, and and then the email from Allison uh, either yesterday or this morning. I, I think for the next meeting, it's going to be really important to sort of put this all in perspective in terms of. Um, um, you know, what this project, what, what the goals are of this project, um, where we're at, where we think we'll end up, and what we're going to need, what I think we're going to need from uh, what I call the larger symbiotic community in terms of, of um, um, turning this into something that is successful um, for, um, um, for everybody. Um, and, 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 and hopefully in that just covers some, you know, real basic things like, for example, uh, collections are not, are not required to make sure that their data gets ported over. That's really up to the, the portal to make sure that um, that happens. And so there's some potentially very basic fundamental uh, misunderstandings as to, you know, what needs to be done um uh in order to uh um upgrade to to s2 okay um are there any questions about that and then we'll set out send out a notice that um uh, mason that's a really interesting uh um meme you've got there uh by the way uh uh, if there are no questions, then I'll turn it over. And um, who wants to go first? Curtis, Evan, Darius? Uh, <clears throat> I can go first since mine is pretty brief. Okay. Yeah. So I've been working on uh, the collection page comments. Oh, Darius, can you turn on your video? Oh, so on. And maybe let him share. Yeah, you can share. Yeah. So I've been working on the collection page comments, and it's pretty much there. Uh, let me go ahead and share this. So here we have the collections page, and we have a paginator, and we have I have some mock data for our collections here. But this is how they're currently listed on the old Symbiota, and I also have so. If I go ahead and log in as an administrator, we have the options to hide the comment, mark as a review, and delete. So that's pretty much what we have going on for the comments previously. But I also noticed that uh, comments are woefully underused. Uh, it was tough to find even one example of a comment being used. And it's also very hard to navigate to in the old Symbiota version. <clears throat> so, I mostly wanted to use this time to ask uh, anyone about their experience with like using comments and how to improve this because it seems like this is not currently being used. Well, from my interaction with Haberia, the thing that they really love is that when at the bottom of the page where it says, if you want to make a comment on this record, you email it directly to the person in charge of the collection. Those get responses within 48 hours. But if you put it into a comments notice and the person has to find time to go in and look at the comments, it doesn't get attended to nearly so frequently. And I don't know about insect collections because one of the comments you made, Neil, just now, rather, no, I'm sorry, I realized I'd misunderstood it. But that is the way that, that herbaria work, in my experience, Allison, you could probably comment from California point of view, that, that people do get a really good response from when they use that link at the bottom. And what I'll do sometimes is say, you also have three other records that are mismapping or whatever the comment is. So that's why I think you're finding it hard to find the comments. Okay, so emailing the person that made uh emailing is faster than using the comment system right so. and it goes directly to their inbox right okay this is doesn't the minutes. comment system usually go straight to the inbox too like no. the current symbiota no you have to log in as 
whoever it is has to go in and look at the comments page. And you get do more, yes. you do get more information about whether or not it's been resolved or not. But uh, Terry, you have your hand up. You want to say something? Um, yes, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I was parked kind of in a bad way and a cop came by. So I'm driving, but I have my hand, phone down hands free. My comment is you cannot comment on the commenter. So if somebody comments, you want to respond to them, unless you know their email, how you need to have a way to get back to them. It's easier. That's, that's my question and how we can do that. Okay. Yeah, we can, we can do that using email notifications, like uh, someone said in the chat. And uh, that's a great point. We need to add some response, some dialogue options within the comments. That way we're not using email. We can keep the conversation within Symbiota. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And someone's saying they like being able to see all these comments. Um, yeah, so that was, a, that was a decision I made. I feel like having all the comments visible on a collection shouldn't just be like an admin ranked. Um, but if you are an admin, you get the tools to review and delete and hide. Then that will put more pressure on that you do need to go and look at the comments every now and again, because quite honestly, I think we just forget to. Right. So. Okay. This is Tim here from University of Minnesota Herbarium. And I have a quick question about the comments. I think they're really useful and I like them a lot. And I think having an email trigger would be really useful. So as Mary pointed out, it's often just the case that I forget to check, pretend to check that there are comments. Another question, um, is it possible to have comments based not just on an individual species, a specimen, but also if you have a species page that includes written descriptions of a species plus associated images from, from specimens and having someone comment on the species. So in other words, they might say, oh, I see, I've seen this plant growing in the, such and such a place and allow that kind of comment at a species level rather than just at the specimen level. Is that even a possibility? Hmm. Hmm. I don't Evan, know of a way to do it now. Hey, Evan, Curtis, what do you what do you think about comments on taxon profile pages? Sorry, I had to unmute myself. Uh, oh. uh, sure, we can we can add comments to taxon profile pages. That's exactly what I I I, I forgot the the name. The taxon profile pages are exactly what I'm thinking of, where we might include more detailed written description of a particular species and have people able to comment on on the tax on profile page sure no worries okay well that's pretty much what i wanted to do as i worked on this comment uh functionality i just wanted it to be useful uh and uh, so adding email triggers, that's something we can easily do. Adding uh, comment threads, uh, definitely gonna be talking with Evan about that. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much my part of this presentation, getting a discussion about comments and how to improve them. So if Thank there you. are no further questions, I will pass it on to Curtis or, or Evan. I just wanna say, I think it looks great. Darius, um, since we didn't get to meet yesterday, this is the first time I'm seeing it and it's awesome. Um, and yeah, once we get that thread uh, reply sort of functionality going, uh, we could easily just port these same components over to Taxa, right, Curtis? So, right. yeah. I'll make sure to get it flushed out even better. So, thank you, though. Cool. So, <laughs> Curtis, if you don't mind, I was thinking I go next because I'm going to start and upload. That might just be a lot of dead air. So we okay, should go for it. start mine and then we can go to you and then back. Okay. Okay, cool. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yep. 
Cool. So I've been working on occurrence uploads. Um, and I've been testing with ASU, ASU vascular plant herbarium. Um, I downloaded all the records from Cynet just as a CSV. Um, and you can see I wiped the Symbiota 2 database. Uh, these stats will auto update as we do uploads. Um, and this is kind of similar to what I showed last week, um, but a little bit more fleshed out. Uh, this is really actually tricky functionality to implement. Um, so I've just been perfecting it um, over the past two weeks. Um, so I'm gonna begin an upload and it's gonna give me a summary page after analyzing the CSV um, and finding duplicate records. So no existing occurrences will be updated because I have nothing in the database and we're creating 148,000 new ones. Um, so I'm gonna go with that. Um, and as we said last time, it's asynchronous. So it's gonna do this in the background and I can still click around the site and, and do searches and, and stuff like that. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about what it's doing as it processes these. It process it, the, the CSV upload module processes about a thousand occurrences um, per, maybe 500 occurrences per second um, uploading those into the database. Um, and it's actually throttled. I could go faster than that, but we want to throttle it so that if I do this and you do this at the same time, um, we're not eating up each other's resources. Um, so one of the things that automatically does is goes out to the taxonomy plugin and uh, figures out the entire tree all the way up to kingdom for the occurrence. Um, and um, also does things like processes the locality data, uh, georeferencing, stuff like that. Um, I don't think any of these records are georeferenced the way I have them set up right now, but uh, that is working as well. Uh, so now while this finishes, I'm gonna hand it off to Curtis. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Um, my only, so, uh, so one of the things that's next on my um, list is taxonomy upload. Uh, and so I'll copy all your code. <laughs> I imitate, will imitate the masters. Um, so it's great that I waited until you finished all that tricky code. Um, but one question I would have is, um, uh, let us uh, imagine a situation where we're doing both a taxa upload and an occurrence upload at the same time. Um, should we worry about that situation or since they're both happening asynchronously? Yeah, I think it's a, uh... That's an optimization problem, right? Like we just need to, to get testing, get rolling on that and see what kind of throttling we need to implement. Okay. Cause like I said, I've, I've done it in a, in occurrences and I'm sure you could just uh, implement the same thing for taxa. Um, and so we make sure we're not stepping on each other's toes and eating up all the resources with uh, concurrent uploads. So. Okay. So, um, so with that, uh, I would just show what I, uh, did this past week, I guess. Um, so uh, the first thing to show is, so I work on the taxonomy parts. And so this is just a taxonomy viewer. And um, I'm just gonna show that I made uh, Mary happy. Um, so now no, notice Mary that uh, in authors, um, there's no hyphen. Good, thank <laughs> I, you. I also, just for the computer science part of me, I just made the authors in a slightly smaller font to separate it from the name. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I just wanted to do some kind of separation there. That's <laughs> why. I appreciate that. Okay. Um, and so then you can view the taxonomy. And once you view the taxonomy, you can go over to the um, taxon profile. Um, and because it's boring to do it in English, let's go ahead and just do it in Russian. Uh, of course, it doesn't change any of these. Uh, oh, so this is the actual description. Uh, inside. So it, all it changed was the, um, the, the fields that I have control over. Um, and so this is the actual description in the database. And then to look at that in the database, what we have is I introduced this little pin icon up here to do profile editing. And so, Tim, this is where we could come and add a, um, uh, another tab here or perhaps another part down here to add comments uh, and keep track of those comments. Um, and so here is the, the little editing thing. And so that takes us, opens up a new page. Um, and it seems to have flipped when it opened up the new page back from Russian to English. 
Um, and so I'll have to find, figure out a way to keep <laughs> the Russian going, <laughs> but I can switch it over here to Russian over here. I don't know Russian, so I don't know what any of this stuff says, but hopefully it's correct. Um, let me just go ahead and show you how we um, internationalize that, and then I'll talk about this editing here. So how we internationalize that um, is um, we have a, a, a file called um, uh, english.json um, that's in part of every plugin. And so these are all the fields that are little fields within the, uh, the user interface. And so within that user interface, we have similar files for all the different languages. And here's the one for Russian. And so what I do uh, in order to uh, internationalize it, I just take you know, whatever fields I've added, I go over to Google Translate. I just put those in and it translates it. I guess here I'm going from English to Spanish, but I could go to choose to any language. Now, um, uh, so I could go to, I guess, Punjabi. <laughs> uh, and so I could just, then I just take this over here, I copy it and I paste it back in to the corresponding file. In this particular case, it um, uh, would be the, uh, the Punjabi file. Um, and then it, it, it loads up into the system and so our internationalization is basically you're just using Google Translate to populate these files from the English file. Um, and so hopefully, hopefully that will um, make the internationalization easy to do. Um, and one of the things that um, maybe we can think about is turning on the internationalization on the fly. Uh, so I don't know how to do that, uh, but that's a potential sort of down the track. Okay, so let me flip back into the editing part. Where did I put my screen? <laughs> I dragged it off over here. Okay, there it is. Let me drag it back. Okay, so um, I, I kept with this sort of the symbiota look and feel in terms of this, the um, buttons. I noticed that Darius had buttons um, with English text in them or, 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 or any kind of text, any kind of language text to identify them. But I noticed that in symbiota, they had the little pin icon and the little trash can icon and the plus icon to add stuff. Um, and so the little pin icon is for editing um, and it just brings this up uh, and I can you know, edit stuff. Uh, it looks like I have to do update, <laughs> update for some reason it's not going, <laughs> going into Russian, it should be in Russian like this is over here, this is cancel in Russian. Um, and then when I update it, it, it updates. So the, um, I should change this back to English to make it simpler. Uh, so this is basically um, the description block uh, and the description block consists of description statements. Um, and so the statements are all these, they're individual statements. Now, this data that we have is from an early version of Open Herbarium where, or some data where um, a, 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 a text on description consisted of lots of different statements and you glued those statements together to form this thing. Um, I think in later versions, um, it's just one statement. And so there's a whole description there it's just one statement of what the, what the text looks like. Um, and so that would bring up, uh, so if I wanted to edit that, that comes in in the notes. Um, so I could edit the individual notes and just edit this. And it comes up in this statement down here. And I can just, it, you know, this box uh, sizes to whatever size is needed, um, uh, whatever it's contained in the statement. And, what, uh, and then I can just update this and it updates the, the notes, uh, which are uh, right, up right here. I put, in, I put in something. Uh, and so I can edit the prescription blocks. There's tax on information as well um, that I can edit. And um, there's common uh, vernacular names. Now in this particular case, this um, species has two different um, uh, 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 common names. Um, and so I could edit the common name and change it. Um, I could add a new one if I wanted to. Oops, where's that? There's the new one. And then I edit this new one, and then whatever the name is. Um, and I can delete it if I wanted to. Now, what I'm working on next uh, going forward is uh, taxonomic status. Um, and so I have this partially done. I didn't want to show this because <laughs> it still does some work. Um, so these are all the synonyms, but this will correspond to what you can do with the taxonomic status uh, in, in Symbiota, where you can accept and, and switch the status. Um, and then all the images, I still haven't done the image plugin parts. And so the images associated with this species um, are, are there for editing too. And you can edit the photographer's name and caption, <clears throat> add new images, et cetera. And it will be similar to 
um, how you do this description block stuff. And finally, um, I haven't done the delete yet. So the delete is also uh, what, what this will do is it'll delete the entire taxon uh, from the hierarchy. And that's somewhat complicated because the taxon may have um, 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 children within it. And so what you have to do is you have to set up a migration process where those children are migrated over uh, to somebody else before you actually delete it. Otherwise, all those children become orphans in the tree and that's not a good situation. Um, so those are the last three sort of little pieces that I have to do. So with that, uh, are there any questions? Like to comment on the comments. Okay. On, and that is, please add them as a separate tab because people can have multiple descriptions on one taxon. And so I think uh, if you have them in a separate tab as comments on this. Okay, so I will go back to, uh, and I do that and show you. Um, uh, I think, am I sharing the wrong thing? I'm sharing, uh, I think I stopped. Let me go back and share the right thing. So this is screen two, there it is. Okay, so this goes back to the profile. And so what happens here is um, basically uh, you can have a, um, as Mary pointed out, um, if I go back to the original thing, one of the, the in um, uh, um, properties of, of these taxa are that there's different thesaurus or taxonomic authorities. And so you can choose which one. And typically what will happen is if you have one that's described in different ones, and I can't think of a species here that which is, 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 is multiple ones in the test data. Um, when you open up this, it'll pop open different tabs for each of those. So there's different tabs for, um, I think in the open herbarium data, you have flora of Somalia and flora of Pakistan. And so there's different descriptions uh, in each of those. And so there'd be a different tab for those. So what I'll do for the comments, the comments would be specific to um, a, a, a specific description. Yeah, exactly. And so it'd be down at the bottom is what I would say, or maybe over here, or maybe I could have a little button up over here say comments or something. But like what that. Tim was suggesting amongst other things was that you, know, you observe something in some place and you'd like to add it to expand the range. Is that how it went? And so I think that would be a general comment on the taxon unit wouldn't necessarily be linking it to a particular description. That's why I was thinking a tab, just like you could have a tab for uses of a taxon, which could bring things from right. it. I mean, it makes a stack. <laughs> so these tabs here correspond to um, if that taxon is described. So it's- it's the source it, of the description. Yeah, exactly, exactly, source of description. And so there can be multiple sources of the description for this taxon. So I already used these tabs or something else. Is that what it is that clear what I'm saying? So I couldn't yeah. have another comment to have here. The comment would be a general one for the taxon. And it might be somebody coming in from New Mexico and then another person coming in from Pakistan if they were in the same network. So you want me to put the comment tab associated up here? Yeah. Um yes. And it wouldn't yeah because it doesn't apply to the taxonomic tree so much as it does to the individual taxon. So is it a comment on the description or a comment on the taxon itself? I guess on the because down here we also have distribution. So what right, but put that but in you wouldn't add it specifically to that one. I mean for your network that will sort of define the region involved, I think. And then, but if you have comments, this comes in as things that people have observed and they want to add that might be considered later on individually rather than um, adding it particularly to the floor of North America description or the field guide description or the something or other description of things. So Tim, you want to comment on the taxon itself, is that it? Yes, these would be uh, just general comments that users might have something interesting to say about um, an observation that they've made on a particular taxon or um, asking a question about a particular taxon not specific to any one of these individual categories that you have here but just rather a, a general comment that anybody might have they might be spurred to make about a particular taxon as a comment on the taxon or a comment on the description on the taxon, isn't it? On the taxon, yes. And they might be saying, well, I've seen this with, you know, with, with purple fruits. 
So it's not that they want to edit that, it's just that they're making a comment and somebody um, who, you know, an admin person for the, for the page might make the change or they might ask for more information, but just that people may have some general comments about a particular tax on. Yeah, I'd argue that comments for individual description blocks like that is maybe a little too fine grained and that comments on the taxon generally would be more useful. I'm curious to see what other people think about, about that. I mean, somebody might also say things like, people here are using it for this. You know, so it's a, sort of a use thing. So it could be a very open thing, but it's an observation that's not documented by an occurrence record or published in a paper. Or, yeah, that's fine. I can just add another lockdown here where they has comments and just open that up. I just wanted to know if it's associated with this or with each individual tab within here. And it sounds like it's associated with the global thing. So right. That's fine. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then I should, another thing I should point out is this image right here. So basically this image uh, is, um, uh, so uh, it, it, it links, it has this thing within it. Uh, so it has a link and that link doesn't work. Uh, so the data itself is corrupted. It's not that the, you know, my code to grab that image is bad. It's that this link right here is bad. Now I, I also added this as a hack temporarily because some of these links to the images are internal uh, to open herbarium. Some of them are um, this, this collection right here, this image lab has moved um, from this old address at ASU to southwestbio.org slash signet. Um, and so I could just go in there and hack it and rewrite all those image links, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, just wanna avoid all these hacks. Uh, so basically this image, it should be an image of whatever this species happens to be. Right, and that's not a, a function of the code, it's a function of the test data we're operating. Of the test data. <laughs> but it sort of, this brings up something and I don't know how other people would feel about this. I think currently, at least in Sinet, it by default goes to EOL, Encyclopedia of Life for images and things, and maybe one or two other places. I don't buy anybody else, but I love Wikipedia, particularly when I'm dealing with animals because they often have pictures there that are good and we know that they are I think it's CC by share alike um, so and it's not a high priority item but being able to bring those ones in if it's possible I have no idea how possible it would be would be a great asset yeah I think you just create a new image record with the link to Wikipedia the Wikipedia image as opposed to uploading an image right yeah and so I would put, I'll add it to the issue list. <laughs> Acknowledging it may not be the top priority, but I think it, it really would be valuable. I know so, it would be where I work, so. I, so. I don't even think that needs a new issue. I think that's existing functionality that we're planning on anyway, so. To Wikipedia? Uh, well, any URL really. Um, the only thing you need to do to link to Wikipedia is, is use that link as the URL for the image that you're creating within the database. Okay. Um, so. Similar question, I think. I just was interested to know how these descriptions are being generated. Are these, is this something that individual people are writing or is it pulling it automatically from other some other source? And likewise with the common name, could, could it link out to another dictionary of common names that exists in EOL or some other resource? Um, and same with the descriptions. Could they be pulled in or are these generated by a user? I think FNA has given permission to sign it to pull records, uh, pull descriptions directly from there. For four of Somalia and four of Pakistan, I have obtained permission. Technically, I could just copy paste, but Actually, I edit as I go through. It's one of my bad features. Um, but there's a permission issue there. You do need it. Um, so that's how basically what governs it from the other part. Oh, and on the business about splitting it up individually in open herbarium, 
my understanding when when I first started developing this was that these would then be used, these statements would somehow be used in the identification key. And so I kept telling myself as I painfully went through each portion that this would have a long-term value. And then I discovered that they really weren't used anywhere else. And that's when I said, well, to heck with this, splitting it up onto statements. It's much, much easier just to either type it in or copy paste it in from an existing resource. But the source is always acknowledged. And I think this is sort of one of the important details too, that we do give credit to the sources. And so I got taken to task on it for one. And I said, got permission. So Tim, uh, to, um, I think what um, uh, Symbiota does currently is it has additional resources as links to those resources. Um, and so there are links within there. So those will show up if those links are populated. And so our test data, I was looking around for another species <laughs> that had those links. Um, so, uh, the, um, so, uh, so, so that's the strategy in Symbiota, rather than pulling them in and re reproducing them there, they link over to where it is at Encyclopedia of Life. Is that, would that help? I'm not aware of any coming descriptions coming from the Encyclopedia of Life, but I could be wrong. I think it just takes it to the website. I think you can have a link to the description. Okay. It doesn't pull the description in, and the same for the images, um, uh, or same for this. Uh, uh, so, so there, there, there's the, a possibility of linking. I mean, there, more directly, we could pull those in directly, I suppose. But as Mary said, there could be permissions issues. I was also just thinking about common names because, in 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 some cases, people who are not familiar with scientific names might like to search by common name, but nobody wants to go through. Um, you know, an entire symbiota portal adding common names. And I didn't know if it was possible to pull in some common names from Encyclopedia of Life or some other resource. Well, the USDA has an official list of what I refer to as the government blessed names. Whether or not anybody actually uses them is another matter. They do because we teach them in university. It's an issue I get rather hot under the cover about. When I put them up from the floor of Somalia, one of my Somali colleagues over there says, well, no, that's not the right one. It's this one. And you've got about, there was one species that had 11 common names, basically three sets, each set being a different transliteration of the same name. So I, I think the issue is as much as anything as to whether you've got a government organization determining which is the correct common name. Well, um, so you can have multiple ones from for a country. So the question here is how do you batch upload a bunch of common names? And right now there's a batch upload of taxonomic names, but there's not a batch upload in Symbiota for okay. common names. And so I think, I think you're completely correct. Nobody wants to go through and add all those common names. And so I was just trying to figure out how they get there. Um, uh, and I think people have entered them by hand. Uh, I don't yeah, see- Yeah, I could see like uploading a CSV with uh, ex, um, the actual name in one column, scientific name in one column, and vernacular name in another, and then we just process those. Yeah. And perhaps that there's works. a That works when you've got this government system. If you've got oh. actual common names, it's trickier. No, but I mean, you could still do it. You could still just create that file by hand if you'd like to. Yeah, you could do it by hand or download it from a third party service if you want and rename the columns. So the, but the other question here then is the format in which, so the common ones would be Encyclopedia of Life, did you say, Tim? Uh, that, yes, that's one option, but also the USDA plants for, for North American plants, as Mary mentioned. So the question is what do they, sort of what their common format is, if they have some kind of common format for common names. <laughs> I realize that common names are com complicated and cause a lot of confusion, but in some cases, some users who are not experts might have a sense that this is how they want to find the plan. Um, yes. So it's, just, it's, it's not, I don't want to bog everything down with this. It's just a, a brief question. No, so when I do the taxa upload, I will look into that particular question as well. Um, the other thing that I added um, for Symbiota, um, I'll share my screen again. Uh, that's not present in Symbiota. So Symbiota had the ability to do common names, but you couldn't, you couldn't search on them. And so now we have the ability to um, 
uh, I don't care about the language. Um, so uh, now you have the ability to drill down and, and pull those up. Um, that would be great. That, yeah, that will be appreciated, I agree. So I, so I added that, so that's a feature in there. And so it'd be nice to get some more common names in there so we could use that feature. <laughs> I, this is Alice, and I just wanted to add that I've used the USDA plant common names list. And I think my suspicion is for a lot of the plants, they had some automated system for populating it from the scientific name, because a lot of them are just very obviously a transliteration of the scientific name and not really a colloquial name. Maybe that's the way it is for most species. They don't have common names that we know of, but um, they're unimaginative when they're populated that way. I will say that. <laughs> I think one of the problems with it is too, and I, I've seen this in grasses, that basically the so-called common name, which Totten University says that, reflects the name that was in use when A.S. Hitchcock wrote Manual of Grasses for North America, so 1935s. So for instance, all the wheat grasses have one spike lip per node and all the lime grasses have more than one spike lip per node because that was the old differentiation between two genera. And it, so the comp complication becomes now, it's so much easier, but that as you, you're right, that they were translations. I did point out one on one of them that they, Oh, I've forgotten what it was, but they translated it as long leaf where it should have been long flower. But, but yeah, and they admitted it. it's translation. That's what they did in the 1930s, 1920s. And maybe earlier. But still, they're there. They're used. So maybe the thing to do is, like you said, just upload something that's easy, let people fix them over time with comments and maybe cite your source or sources for the common names in case people are want to look into it more <laughs> and help and out. There are fields for that in Symbiota, for the source, et cetera, et cetera. So they're there. So I think now when you upload the taxonomic names, is there a common name field within that? No, field? they are two different things. And I, I don't think it's a good idea to try to link the two, but what do you say, Jim? Sorry. Jim, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure, to be honest, the best sort of way of, of doing it or, you know, whether it's uploaded, at what stage these names are added. Yeah, I, I I'm, originally, I was wondering if it could sort of happen automatically, where you have a scientific name that then links out to some um, authority, whether it be EOL or USDA, and it sort of automatically populates that common name field, or whether you actually create a whether you upload the, the common name with the scientific name, I'm not sure of the best, best strategy for doing it. Right well, now, which, what happens is you upload a CSV file that you basically, it's not the automatic pull from EOL, you download the EOL stuff to your CSV file and then upload that into, the, into Symbiota. But I'm, I don't see why you couldn't include the common names from the download and then the upload. Um, I don't, uh, I mean, I, I think the, the, the way you avoid that upload process and you just say, you know, pull in, you know, pull in the EOL taxonomy from the EOL site, that would be the smarter way to do things. Uh, I'll, I'll look into see to doing that. There's no reason why we can't do that. Yeah. Maybe they have a web service that we can hit. And... Yeah, if they have a web service, we can hit that. We could pull it. But I think the other thing is you don't actually often add CSV files of taxa, I don't think. I mean, once you set up your, your, your portal or your network, when you import them from some service, whether it's the catalog of life or anywhere else, you're not routinely adding a whole set of names through a CSV file, I don't think. 
I you're just doing it I once. Don't. You're doing it once at the start, yeah. Right. And so from then on in, it's more likely to be individual things or a few things at a time, but you're updating. And, and you're updating a scientific name because there's been some research or the change or things like that. But it doesn't mean that the common name or vernacular name has changed at all. Okay, so uh, let me share my screen once more because I think, uh, let's see. If I in fact, that's one of the arguments for using vernacular or common names that they're not so likely to change as scientific names are. Okay, so there's this thing. So this is from the site map. There's an Encyclopedia of Life Manager. Mm -hmm. And so basically this thing pulls in um, from Encyclopedia of Life, uh, the taxa and images. So they have this thing built into already Symbiota. So it sounds like we should definitely do this as part of Symbiota 2. So maybe that's to add to the list, Neil. Yeah, and make it more obvious. Um, so that seems and, useful. Yeah, and it seems like you shouldn't, it shouldn't just be Encyclopedia of Life, it's USDA also right. uh, down the track. <laughs> I'll, I'll only make this code first. <laughs> but so is it with that, but this one, it's unclear right now, the taxa upload doesn't do common names, so it's still. I mean, I think we. Sh I think it should facilitate common names too. I mean, if you're pulling the information out EOL, might as well pull the common names. But it's so US biased. I'm sorry, well, and it's also so incomplete. That's fine. I mean, it, it, this process doesn't depend upon the characteristics of the data source, right? So mm -hmm. if you want, you know, global life <laughs> site, as long as it supports it, a pull from the back end, you're okay. But this project is no longer funded, I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but but Mary, Curtis is talking more generically. It doesn't matter what the source is. And ideally it's set up so that you could bring it, you could bring in multiple sources if you needed to, right? Yeah. Or you could select of of from multiple because right now it's just EOL. Yeah, and that that one I, I would argue with, but I mean this whole I don't want to have to edit out records because they're not reliable and i don't want to have to spend the time going through and, and deleting them that's the thing but if you know if you could just sort of say well i don't accept encyclopedia of life because there's not a high enough percentage of them that are reliable that's would be one way to go right you could also download the csv from or whatever data source from encyclopedia of life or usda and hand edit it and then upload that um, if you if you want to curate a little bit better. So, um, so yeah, if that's it for taxonomy, I can go back to um, updating collection statistics for CSVs. Everybody good? Sure. Okay. All right, so you can see my ASU plants. Um, page here uh, and I have a notification that tells me my upload for collection ID number one that's ASU has completed. So I'll dismiss that. If I refresh, uh, I have all the occurrences from the CSV and it counted the families and genera for me. Uh, obviously there's a problem with my data there because I have no species but one genera. Um, and 101 families. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so this, yeah. Um, but it is doing this properly. I'm not, I'm not sure what happened there. Um, because what it does is goes out to the taxonomy. It looks up the actual taxon for uh, the scientific name in the row of the CSV. Um, and then it figures out the ancestors of that taxon. Um, and, then, and then links it up really nice and uh, efficiently so that um, for a specific occurrence, you can go up all the way, go all the way up the tree if you'd like. Um, and so if I go to searching occurrences now and just select ASU, I get all of my 148,000 results. And what I'm working on now is the editor. So this is a, just the display for a search result, but then the editor needs a little bit of work still missing some fields, obviously, and some tabs. Um, but that's what I'm, that's working on this morning. 
Um, okay. But th uh, this is a collection profile page, not statistics. No, this is this is an occurrence. Um, right, right. But you started off with the collection profile page, not the statistics tab. Right. No, I, I'm talking more generally about got it. Okay. Statistics for the collection. Yeah. Um, I think what Neil's talking about is a, a page where you can get a little bit more in depth statistics. Um, let's look. Right, Neil, if I go to the statistics, statistics tab. Oh. So, this, but this is a feature that's, I think the only ones that use this are Scan and the uh, Michael portal. Uh, Andy Miller paid for some of it and Scan paid for some of it. Um, and this is to basically provide quick statistics on um, uh, uh, who, who's, so uh, do click on the load stats for year stats. Yeah, so first we can see, we've got occurrences, georeference images, uh, families, general species, which I kind of have already. Um, and then per collection, Neil, you said? No, 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 load stats over to the right, this one. down. Go down, yeah. So one of the things that's really nice about this feature is um, you can go back as many years as you want, but it basically provides monthly uh, um, statistics for um, uh, records that are entered, and then you can have them broken down into the various stages they're at, and then it also records images uploaded and and whether they've been um, georeferenced. So that'll be an S2. And um, um, uh, I like, but I, like I said, right now, I don't think any of the plant portals um, use this. It's just the um, uh, mycology portal, myco portal and scan. Yeah. So the first thing that jumps out is me is that I had to go up to the statistics tab. You had to tell me that twice. Uh, uh -huh. And why isn't this part of the collection profile itself, right? Like that makes sense where it should be. So that's that's probably where it's going to end up. Um, and um, also that it's... Uh, because it's more like actually the occurrence search because you typically don't just look at one collection. You look at um, a number of collections. But Evan, you and I can talk about this Sure. Um, um, afterwards, there's other aspects about this that um, um, Ben basically ran out of money before he could implement a, a couple of things that would really make this um, a lot better feature. So like right now, it doesn't really work if you just want to know, for example, um, 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 legumes and then look at the status of uh, of legumes for a, a subset of collections. And it doesn't do country, um, um, which it, that would be really nice to be able to incorporate a, just a couple of additions, but um, that very well could be down the road. Right. Uh, the se the sure. second thing that jumped out to me is that it's slow, right? I get a blank page for a while before I actually get the stats. Um, and so I think we have an opportunity here to sort of update these either periodically or on the fly so that you can get better stats all the time uh, for a collection or a subset of all the collections. So mm -hmm. yeah, we can talk about that more later. Okay. Uh, and that's all I've got for a demo. Anybody have any questions? Well, I, I, I'll just add like, I, I used it recently just to document the impact of uh, COVID, so you you could what you could really easily track collections and their um, their entries and 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 how everything just went like dead when COVID hit and when when different collections start picking up again and um, uh, and, and others didn't. Yeah, I love love me some good data. So uh, I'm foreseeing like graphs and things like that. That'd be cool. Yeah. An annual report, boy, that would be great to have sure. that. One quick comment, because we're nearly at the end. Um, Allison sent in a, a wish list of things that she would like to see functionality, and uh, she gave me permission. It, 
uh, and Ali has put it up on the symbiota2.org site. That's the site that's about the Symbiota 2, and it's going to include the help pages. And so it's herbarium oriented, comes out California Consortium of Herbaria. But she had some excellent suggestions up there. And also up there is something that I've been developing in terms of the help pages. And I've been splitting those up into this is what Symbiota 2 does. And this is what Symbiota 2 Plus, by which I mean sometime in the future. It's not a promise, but it's looking ahead, things that could be added in once we've got it much easier for Symbiota 2 to be modified. Alison, Ali got that thing up today. He, it was a bit of a problem because um, the hosting service for Symbiota2.org is designed for WordPress, so he had to create a solution for moving it over from Angular and SJS. And he got it done sooner than he thought. So that is up there. And I liked the way you, you laid it out, Alison. It was very clear. So I thought it was a good example too for other people who find it difficult to put issues into GitLab that's intimidating, that maybe they find it easier to write things up for a wish list and we can sort of go from there. Go with them in. But um, so, Allison, you don't have those as issues on a, on a, a GitHub site. I actually don't even know what GitHub is. Okay. <laughs> well, so, but Me but it's good. It, add some of them, okay? Um, so, um, uh, GitHub is just basically a, a, a piece of software that allows primarily developers um, to um, share stuff and and and. Um, share uh, progress. But so for SCAN, for example, we have a GitHub site and we have, I think, 46 issues um, um, up there. Uh, the point I want to make is um, it would be really great to combine these lists. So um, if, if anybody else has a list of all the things that you would like to see um, uh, incorporated into Symbiota, um, it'd be great to share those. And at some point we can, you know, throw them all together and see where there's um, overlap and, uh, and combine them. Allison, I think, I think every one of your wish list items we did not, we do not have on scan. So uh, you, you definitely added to the um, things that it would be nice to see. Yeah, it'd be exactly. good to, it would be good to combine those because that, you know, scan developer must be asleep at the wheel. I'm kidding, it's me, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, I, and as I say, I have started and I told Alison I'd do that. I would add them to the GitLab for Symbiota too, all right? Okay, I'll look and see what GitLab is. And it's a compilation of uh, Terry Barry, who's uh, our collections manager and Mary Nazar Rancho and I came up with when we were, um, Mayor was, I guess Rancho was trying to decide whether they would join Symbiota and she wanted to know what what we liked and what we didn't like, mostly told her we loved the everything about it and but those were little fiddly things and as you guys pointed out it's maybe later on in your development process you can add them but um, it, I appreciate it. So um and just quickly, so um, so GitHub, and if you can see my screen, um, that's the, the primary software that most people use for projects. Um, Evan is using um, GitLab, which is less well known, but all of the results from GitLab are also shared on GitHub. But so for example, here's our 46 issues um, uh, that we have listed for, um, um, for scan, um, but we can, but since we already have a Symbiota um, um, a GitHub page, uh, Evan, we can just incorporate maybe all of those, all of the issues in uh, in one issues page on Symbiota, Symbiota right? Symbiota 2, yeah. Symbiota 2, I'm sorry. Um, the um, Symbiota is technically a different project. You can see it up there on Neil's screen on the top left. Um, um, and that's so go over to GitLab, Symbiota 2. I think you'll see the first two of Allison's in there. Yeah, I, I don't have the quick link to GitLab. Um, yeah. But GitLab looks the same. It's basically a place where 
we as developers store our code and then accept feedback from people who are not developers um, on on the code uh, on the on the product. So that's that's what GitHub and GitLab are for. Mm -hmm. But Allison took me a long time to learn to use it. <laughs> it's actually pretty user friendly. I'll try it. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay, so uh, is there anything else? Any open questions? Um, um, if not, then uh, we'll end the meeting um, here. And um, like I said, so the next meeting will be September 8th. And in that meeting, we'll reference the documentation document that lists all of the 60 web pages or so that um, uh, the developers are working on. Um, we will take a deep breath and uh, tell everybody how many pages have actually been processed. And then that, would that will give us a timeline for when we think um, a real functional kind of first draft of S2 um, um, will happen. And then I'll present some sort of background um, stuff on uh, um, uh, at least what I think is going to be needed to really bring the community together to, you know, help make all of this happen. Oh, and then we will also have will pierce back if this meeting seemed a little bit low energy it's because our cheery brit fellow uh is on vacation <laughs> but we'll get him back um in three weeks um, um for that meeting any other if there are no other parting comments i will stop the recording and end the meeting